next, CBS Sports presents College Football. for the SEC championship continues and the Auburn Tigers want to be on top. When it comes to the big play, look to defensive tackle Tracy Rocker. Number 74 is simply devastating. He commands a defense that allows the fewest points in the nation. And the Tigers have made it absolutely clear that they'll stand up to any team in their quest for the Sugar Bowl. And here in Auburn, they chant War Eagle. But down south, there's another power. How about them dogs? The Georgia Bulldogs are again on the move. Led by sensational running back Tim Worley, the dogs make it happen with a running game that produces almost 300 yards a game. They'll have to play their best game of the season today if they are to beat their longtime rival and advance toward the Sugar Bowl. It's do or die for both teams, Georgia against Auburn, today on CBS. on hand for this confrontation between the Bulldogs and the Tigers at Jordan-Harris Stadium. And indeed, they could wind up setting the all-time attendance record as they get ready for this game here this afternoon and the importance reflected in the Southeastern Conference standings. You can see that this is virtually a loser-out matchup. The winner hopes to go on not only to share with perhaps LSU, which plays Mississippi State, but to wind up in the Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Well, one of the stories within the stories here this afternoon really involves a sensational running back, number 38, Tim Morley. If you haven't seen him, you're going to be paying attention today to perhaps the finest collegiate running back in the land. He's a certain number one draft choice. But coming up to this game, these were his thoughts. I've been nervous all week for some reason. I mean, just every everything is just making me nervous. I don't know why. And, and it's a big responsibility, but, you know, Hopefully I can handle it this weekend. Pat Hayden, uh, I'd be nervous too if I had to go up against this defense. Well, you're right. Vince Dooley is nervous too. He has seen every Auburn defense since 1950. He thinks this is the best one. And this defense all starts in the defensive line. They have three guys down there. Tracy Rocker, Benji Rolden, and Ron Stallworth. They're the nation's best. They can stop the run. They lead the nation in run defense and in scoring defense. They get you in a lot of passing downs, and you can't beat them if you're in the third and eight all day. Now, what about Worley's style? How does it compare with Herschel? Well, Pat Dye said he's the best he's seen since Herschel Walker. A big guy, 6'2", 250. 15 pounds, has the ability to take the distance, go 70 yards on you, and can get you the tough two yards. All right. So 85,000 will be on hand this afternoon to watch Georgia and Auburn here in Auburn, Alabama. And right now, let's send you to New York for a scoring update, and here's Jim Nan. All right, thank you, Brett. This is a big day as far as clearing up the bowl picture, and the game really holding all the cards is taking place at the Meadowlands. Rutgers hosting number four, West Virginia. Now, the Mountaineers trailed early in this game, 10 to 7, when Major Harris took over. He threw a masterpiece of a pass as he ripped this one to Reggie Rimbert. 48 yards is covered. That made it 14 to 10. They've opened it up now, 21-10, just about ready to start the second half. Michigan will go to the Rose Bowl with a victory today. Right now, it's a, an 11-point lead at halftime over Illinois. And if Clemson wins this ball game against Maryland, the Tigers will go to the Citrus Bowl. Maryland led at halftime. Clemson's come back, just scored a touchdown, five yards out, Terry Allen. But right now, of course, uh, we also will have the scores and highlights as well as the bowl picture at halftime. But right now, in our never-ending quest to bring you college football's latest hits, we're going to show you what happened when Marshall University's football team, in a twist on the traditional halftime show, returned the favor for the school's big green marching band at a recent recital. Now, assistant band director Ben Miller drummed up the idea when he was struck by the percussive potential of helmets and shoulder pads.
So the beat goes on. And the coach, Arrow Parsegan, will join us at halftime. But right now, we're getting set for Georgia and Auburn. After this message and a word from your local station. Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, CBS Sports brings you the showdown in the Southeastern Conference between the Bulldogs of Georgia and the Tigers of Auburn. And here in Auburn, that eagle is named Tiger, and they chant War Eagle. And a short time ago, Vince Dooley of Georgia on the left, shaking hands with his counterpart, Pat Dye of Auburn. Such an interesting story, since Dye played football at Georgia, and Dooley was here at Auburn back in the 50s, a quarterback and a safety on the football team. Then he became an assistant coach of the Tigers. And the year that Lyndon Johnson moved into the White House, Vince Dooley moved over to Athens, Georgia. Now in his 25th year. And if he can win here today, he would capture his 200th victory. And the Georgia team captains filing out of their locker room here on a glorious Saturday afternoon in Auburn, Alabama. Then on the other side, Pat Dye, the Auburn coach. He played at Georgia in 1959, had a couple of brothers play. Wally Butts was the coach, and Fran Tarkenton was the quarterback, and Dye was a tough pulling guard who would later go up to the Canadian Football League. But his heart now is in Alabama. I love these dogs. <laughs> How about them dogs? Well, Pat's got his own. Stable of seven. And here come the Georgia Bulldogs. see the Tigers pour onto the field. in Georgia and we'll be right back. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Jordan-Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama. It's the Georgia Bulldogs versus the Auburn Tigers. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Coors Light. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet. It's the right beer now. GMAC, the official sponsor of America's Dreams. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. This afternoon, ready for the kickoff. Georgia will kick it off, and they will have that breeze at their back. John Casey with the ball on the tee for the Bulldogs, and he'll get his start. Slack, the Auburn quarterback with a first and ten. Joseph and Danley behind him, and this is Danley, the leading rusher for the Tigers. He comes out to the 26, and Paul Giles trips him up. What about Slack's 
skill position players, Pat. Big arm of Reggie Slack. James Joseph and Stacy Daly. Joseph moved to fullback, was a tailback. The running game has really come around. Lawyer Tillman is the big receiver. Wagan, number 14, a good possession receiver. Walter Reeves, the tight end, will be a big factor today. Now Reeves is changing over to the left side of the formation. He's a top flight blocker. They'll come to the weak side, and Danley busted a tackler and got across the 30 for a first down for the Tigers. What about the Georgia secondary, Pat? Well, this is what has the coaches a little bit concerned. Ben Smith is an incredible athlete at one corner. Dave Hargett gets the start at the right corner spot. Vince Guthrie's playing with a short shoulder at strong safety, and Beasley is an overachiever at free safety. First and 10 for Auburn. The ball at their own 33-yard line. Joseph, the fullback, a good run. Off the fake, slack to throw on first down. Comes underneath to the tight end, Reeves, and he's out to the 44 with Vince Guthrie bringing him down. It's a 12-yard gain and another first down. And Brent, that is what are you going to see all day from these Auburn Tigers. You're going to see the tight end going across the formation into the strong side and weak side flats, catching short passes. LSU can wrap up at least a co-championship if they hold on and win that one against Mississippi State. Now Slack, again operating from the I formation. Danley behind Joseph. No running room that time. Wycliffe Lovelace, number 94, doing a good job defensively for the Dogs. What the Georgia Bulldogs want to do on defense is force Reggie Slack into that third and eight. First down is the key to this dog defense. Auburn with a wrinkle. An extra wide receiver, and Joseph is out of the game. So they'll go with one setback in this formation. Three wide men for Slack. On second and nine, Slack to the pocket. Has time. Almost intercepted. Not a good throw for Lee Mark Sellers. Demetrius Douglas, number 53, was the defensive player there for the Dogs. It is third and long. And exactly what the Georgia Bulldog defense wanted to do here in this first series. Don't let them get in third and one all day, as they have most of this year. Joseph returns. He brings the play in, number 10, the converted tailback. Now the Tiger fullback. If they want a wrinkle, they might try the draw play here in third and long if George is looking for the pass. Let's see. They split the backs. And here he comes. Joseph angling to the left side. He will not get his first down. He's down at midfield, and Vince Guthrie, 54, doing a tough job out of that secondary. Guthrie did just what he's supposed to do on third and long. You look to see if it's a pass. If it's not, it's the draw. Stay at home. He did and made the play. The punter for Auburn is sensational. Brian Schulman out of Brentwood, Tennessee. Couldn't make the volunteers, so he came down here. He specializes in dropping the ball dead inside the 20. Into the wind. Fielded at the 15 by Carswell, and down he goes. A 35-yard punt and no return. Great coverage for Schulman that time. And Pat Hayden, what about the Georgia attack? Wayne Johnson is the quarterback. A big guy, 6'4", runs the ball pretty well. But his job really is to get the ball to Tim Worley. 1,100 yards from Worley this year. Ellis, a good blocker. These receivers are pretty much possession receivers. The tight end, Sadowski, a great blocker. Like to run the sweep behind him. Sadowski is on the left side. And now they'll put Worley back in a tailback and move Sadowski. Forcing the defense to show itself to the coaches upstairs. And they'll come with the big man to the short side. Worley busts through a tackle. First down on the opening play and out to the 30-yard line. A 14-yard burst by Tim Worley, who is 6'2", 220, out of Lumberton, North Carolina. He has a year left, but everyone expects him to come to the NFL next year. We already talked about Sadowski, the tight end, number 87. He blocks that linebacker. That is the key matchup right there. Sadowski on Smith and the outside linebacker. So if he can make that block, Tim Worley is going to gain a lot of yards on the sweep play. Cummings is the wide receiver, split to the right side. Now they back the tight end off, and they put him in motion. 
They'll run behind him. It is Worley searching for daylight. He bangs into Tracy Rocker, number 74. Here's the heart of that defense, Pat. We've already talked about the guys up front. Benji Roll, I think the best nose guard I have seen this year. Does a terrific job inside. Rocker's gotten all the publicity, but Stallworth quietly is having a great year for the defense. The second and eighth against this Auburn Tiger defense. Remember, they yield fewer than seven points a game. Now, Worley, who can catch, goes in motion out to Johnson's right. Johnson to throw it under pressure, can't get it off. So he takes off and busts it out to the 38-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down. Tracy Rocker giving chase, but there was huge pressure on it. An amazing quick pressure because this is supposed to be a quick pass, a five-step drop, but the coverage made him bring it down. And again, it was Ron Stallworth from the backside who has great mobility. He's almost like a running back, can make that tackle miss him, and he put quick pressure on Johnson. Now Kirk Warner with a double tight end and third and short. So Georgia to show power here against this Auburn defense. And here comes Worley. Has his daylight and the first down. David Rocker, the younger brother of Tracy, bringing him down. Brent, as good as Tim Worley is for Georgia to win today, Wayne Johnson is going to have to complete some passes. You can't beat this team, this, this Auburn defense, with one dimension. If you're a Georgia fan, though, you must take heart in the fact that they have driven out to their own 42. If stalled and forced to punt, that pins Auburn way back. Nobody likes a game of field position better than General Vince Doolin. Now Sadowski, who always moves around, so the defense has to show itself at that line. Cummings, and they come back to the short side with Rodney Hampton, who had checked in and replaced Worley, and Alvin Mitchell led the Tiger defense that time. We have seen Georgia really run three sweeps into the short side of the field, Brent, and the reason for that is that Auburn is taking away the wide side. They're really slanting to the wide side of the field, and that's a nice adjustment by Georgia running into the boundary. So again, Georgia in second and eight, as they were with their last series. John Thomas, their leading receiver, he split to the short side this time. Arthur Marshall out to the wide side, and now Sadowski goes over there. Johnson to throw to the wide side, drills it complete for the first down. So the man coming out was Arthur Marshall and Carlo Cheatham, number 35, defending him. But now the Bulldogs are within striking distance after that 30-yard pass play, and he ripped that ball. You're right, and if they can do this kind of passing with the running of Whirling, Georgia is a formidable opponent. That ball was thrown in right in between double coverage. It was a frozen rope from Johnson to Marshall. He's got a very big-time arm, Johnson does, and he's been after it this year. The ball at Auburn's 27-yard line. First down now for the Dogs. Their opening series of the game. Auburn was forced to punt. Johnson bootleg to the right, finds time, got his man, and he's caught for a touchdown by John Thomas. to attempt the extra point. There are at least, at least 8,000 Georgia fans, many of them seated right behind this end zone. This is not going to be an enormous home field advantage. Look at that sea of red. Brent, little things win big ball games. The terrific fake off the pitch fake to Johnson. And then it fooled the defensive back, Cheatham, and then Thomas makes a great catch. But that touchdown was set up by a great fake and the pitch plays that they had run three or four times earlier. How about them dogs? They strike first here in Auburn. Milledgeville, Georgia. And he's the dogs' leading receiver. 18 catches now. The 27 yard reception for the score and Casey to kick it off for the second time. In case you 
just joined us. This will be Auburn's second possession. They punted on their first, and the dogs roll down for the touchdown that has them ahead. This is Shane Washington coming out 10, 15, out to the 23-yard line, and down there where it will be up to Reggie Slack. Pat, let's go back and take a look at that scoring play. Well, what's supposed to happen, this is the free safety who's supposed to have the deep zone, but he comes up here on the fake after a great fake by Wayne Johnson, and then John Thomas runs behind him. See how he steps over to his right? He is supposed to have the deep outside. That is not Carl Cheatham's fault, but it was the great play fake by Wayne Johnson that got him out of position. Now remember for Auburn, this is the first real big game that Reggie Slack has quarterback. Experience in pressure situations is critical. They move Reeves to the right side. And they will run Danley into the heart of that defense. He breaks a tackle, and finally Demetrius Douglas, who was the first to hit him. This offensive line from Auburn has had a pretty good year. They are led by the center, John Hudson. Ed King, 18-year-old freshman, is coming here at start at Auburn. He is going to be a great one. And Jim Thompson, probably the stronger of the tackles on the weak side of the quarterback. Second down. Wagan to Slack's right. Tillman to his left. The toss to Danley. The sophomore looking for room. Georgia stretches it out, and he managed to get to the corner before Vince Guthrie got him out of bounds. But this will leave Auburn in third and short. This defensive front of the Bulldogs, Bill Goldberg leads it at nose tackle. A very active man inside. Lovelace, a good pass rusher. Giles very plays very tough in a defined area. Douglas had two interceptions a week ago, very good against the pass. And, of course, Cowan's on the outside. They need a big game from Cowan's on the pass rush. Double tight end formation. Only one yard to go for the first down. Joseph the fullback. Danley the tail. And it'll be Danley for the first down, and he picks his way. Fumble, Georgia. Georgia recovers the fumble. He had the first down, and he has turned it over. Vince Guthrie, number 54, wrapping it up. When I think of the Georgia defense, I always think about a lot of jerseys and red helmets on the ball. And you're going to see that. You're going to see, after a couple of a good runs, two blockers right there. And it looked like 57 Guthrie stripped the ball. And then Guthrie made the recovery. It was Lewis who made the recovery, but Guthrie stripped him of it. And there is, there's Guthrie, number 54, playing with a very short shoulder. Now first and ten. Johnson and the Dogs back to work. They'll toss to Worley behind Ellis. Worley patient. Gets to the 40-yard line, and Brian Smith credited with the tackle for Auburn. Smith, Pat, why is it that all great runners share that one trait? They are so patient as they run behind their blockers. And Worley has a lot of that. I think the great runners have that vision, and they don't want to rush the run. They wait to see something develop and open up in that soft spot. Worley has that kind of vision. They have a superb backup, and he's in the game right now. Out of Houston, Rodney Hampton, number seven. Not as fast as Worley, but he can run well. Coming to the short side now, looking for his daylight. Tries to power his way. And he was stopped short of that first down. Let's say that Cheatham and Smokey Hodge got there. You mentioned it again one more time. Georgia ran that pitch play into the short side. And until Auburn shifts its nose guard or slants to the short side or plays it straight, they're going to continue to run that play. Hampton still in the game. He'll be with Ellis. This is a power formation. Keith Henderson is out there for the wishbone. So with two yards to go, double tight, and Johnson, the quarterback, kept it and was short of the first down. Ron Stallworth going after the ball that time, and Georgia with a decision to make right here. They have the wind at their back, and they will come with John Casey to attempt the field goal. Pat, they have two field goal kickers whom they use, both Casey and Steve Crumley. They use Casey from anywhere from the 25-yard line out, and they also use him for extra points, but they use Crumley in the short, accurate field goals. That's where they want him, but he's got the bigger leg, Casey. This is a 53-yard attempt. Great tally. The backup quarterback will hold for him. He rockets it, but it was hooking, and it missed. 
A left-footed kicker hooked it just a little bit too far. Georgia leading by seven, and it'll be Auburn's ball when you come back. Jim Nance with this update from New York. Clemson going to the Citrus Bowl as the ACC rep. With six minutes to go, Gary Cooper, the pride of the Tigers, helped wrap it up with this 52-yard end around. Clemson will play the loser of Oklahoma and Nebraska next week. Let's go back to Brenton Pat. All right, Jim, and here at Jordan Hare Stadium in Auburn, Alabama, the Bulldogs lead the Tigers 7-0. John Dockery also working with us down on the sideline. Georgia scored on a pass on their opening series. Auburn allowing fewer than seven points a game. And the Dogs lead by that margin right now, 7-0. Reggie Slack trying to get something going. Here comes the end around. Coming with Alexander Wright faking, coming and keeping the tail back to the right side. That was Danley, the ball carrier. So a play to keep in mind will be working off that fake. They'll hand it off to the wide man. And I think this is actually a decision that Danley can have. If he thinks he can actually take it up inside, he may so do. But it was a nice fake to Alexander Wright. He's a guy who's got tremendous speed, and later in the game, he'll come right back to him. But it only gained two yards. Reeves, the tight end, to the left side. Barry who jumped on him as he came through there and he got out near the 45 yard line just short of it where it will be third down for Auburn. What you're seeing with Stacy Danley and the tailback from Auburn they're giving him the ball an awful lot in the first quarter because he is one of those tailbacks who gets stronger and stronger as the day goes on. He's a very good fourth quarter player. Averaging better than five yards a pop here. Three yards to go for the first down. One running back, extra wide receiver, Joseph Flares out of the backfield, and there's the first down for Auburn. He keeps the drive going, gets to midfield, and I'll tell you, Vince Guthrie, number 54, is playing a whale of a game for that Georgia secondary. And he is playing with a very, very sore shoulder, Vince Guthrie. Really was a linebacker, as you can see by the number 54. They moved him to strong safety. He's a little bit out of position, but he gives you everything he has and plays hard every down. Now, Auburn ready to move into Georgia territory for the first time here this afternoon. We're inside of four minutes in the opening quarter. Danley is back. Extra wide man. Joseph is out. Slack will put it up on first down. Goes long for the touchdown, and it is dropped at the 10-yard line. Number 18, Alexander Wright, had a chance. David Hargett was covering him. And Hargett does a nice job at the last moment of putting his hands up, Brent. That is not interference in college football, face guarding. And watch Hargett as he puts his hands up right there. And that ball really should have been caught by Alexander Wright, although the ball was underthrown. Had Slack led him a little bit more, it would have been an easy score. Second and ten for the Tigers. Joseph and Danley back in. This is Danley. Slips a tackle. It's close to a first down, but he is hammered short of it, and again it was Vince Guthrie. So he delivers a wallop like a linebacker right there. Good blocking on the left side of that offensive line. Ed King, the freshman, 18 year old, years old, starting at left guard for the Tigers, and Jim Thompson on the left side really created that scene for Danley to find. Here's third and short for the Tigers. And one wide man, two tight ends to help out with the blocking. Dan Lee for the first down. Holds on to the ball, and he is close to the 35-yard line with Morris Lewis credited with the back. Brent, as we watch Auburn move down the field, watch how this offensive line gets off. Number 76, Barner steps to the inside, really controls the nose tackle, and that allowed Danley to get up and over the top for the first. Reeves coming in motion, setting up on the right. Danley on a cutback. Breaks a tackle, and the first penalty flag of the game is down. The first penalty marker of the game, down at the 35-yard line, is going to go against Auburn. They're going to bring this one back. 
Interesting signal. The referee said face mask and then pointed to the Auburn team. I give Pat Dye some credit. He has shown great flexibility as a coach. Doesn't really feel terribly comfortable with the throwing game, but need, but knows. Offensive lineman grabbing the face mask. It's a 15-yard penalty. Still first down. Wow. Just talking about Pat Dye. He knows that you have to throw the ball now in the SEC to win, and he has made that adjustment well. I don't believe we've seen that penalty. Yeah, year. face mask on the offensive uh, lineman. That's one way to hold. <laughs> First and 25. Now they got that extra wide man. Wagan back in the game. Shane Wasden is there. Lawyer Tillman, who hasn't touched it yet, is over at the short side. Slack under pressure drops the screen. Danley battling to try and catch the ball over there on the far side. And Wycliffe Lovelace, number 94, really did a nice job. That's a great play when a defensive tackle reads that screen, feels that there's no pressure, and he went right out there and made the quarterback throw the ball right over his head, and that's why it wasn't completed. Again, in the Southeastern Conference, if LSU wins and Georgia wins here this afternoon, they would tie for the conference title and their season over. For Auburn to get a piece of it, they must win not only here today, but the day after Thanksgiving in Birmingham when they will play arch rival Alabama. So another penalty. Handball, personal foul. Offensive team. Self-destructing. We have seen a fumble by Auburn and two critical penalties in this drive when they really had it going. It's tough to win a championship when you have those kind of penalties. Second down and forever. <laughs> Second and a mile. This is when the, the coach turns his back and the quarterback is on his own. They give him an extra wide receiver. He'll have four wide men. Slack back. Has time. Throws to the near side, but no one there. Down the bounds. That was Ben Smith, talented corner for the Georgia Bulldogs, working here on the near side. He's probably the best of their secondary men, although I've got to tell you, Vince Guthrie has really been impressive for Coach Dooley this afternoon. Vince Dooley's an interesting guy. The dean of all coaches in America, takes a class each spring at Georgia. May someday refer to him as Governor Dooley. Third down. Slack again to throw. He'll drop it to Danley over the middle, and Auburn will punt. That was Bill Goldberg, the nose man, dropping back to bring him down. And these Georgia fans making some noise there in that end zone right now. They like how things are going here in the early moments of this showdown. Chuck Carswell. It's a fair catch called for it. It's 26 yards. So 112 to go in the opening quarter. Georgia leads it by a touchdown. We'll be right back. We are back in Auburn. 7-0 Georgia. And I was just telling our fine director, Joe Asetti, that Tim Worley is back on the field. He left and some tape was put on his hand. Number 38 is back out here for this series with the Bulldogs leading the Tigers 7 to nothing. And your early impressions here, Pat? Well, I've really been surprised how well the offensive line of Georgia has been able to control the line of scrimmage. We thought that was the issue coming into the game, but the offensive line of the Dogs has done a very nice job. The fullback is Keith Henderson. He's number 30. Lined up in front of Worley. Sadowski over on the right. Here's that toss. And look how Worley cuts the daylight. Stays on his feet. Gets to the 45-yard line. Brian Smith tackles him. An 18-yard run. And that's why all the scouts are here today. To watch number 38 in action. You know what's amazing to me is you watch Worley for a big guy. Again, he weighs almost 220 pounds. Watch the elusiveness. He moves those hips. He can cut either way off either foot. And he breaks tackles. 
He reminds me a little bit of Eric Dickerson. Runs under control. His feet are close to the ground. Smooth cuts. That's putting him some high atmosphere. I don't want to jinx the young man. First and ten now. Johnson off a fake to Worley. Drops back, and he will have to take off. His receivers were covered. He battles his way to the 46. And again, Brian Smith, number 90, tackling him. Robert. Brian Smith is again a key man for this Tiger defense. He is the guy who is responsible pretty much for taking on Troy Sadowski, the tight end. If he can defeat that block, he can stop that pitch play. So far, Sadowski's got the better of him. Arthur Marshall just brought the play in. He goes to the wide side. He's the receiver that Johnson drilled. This is second and eight. Marshall out there again. The referee blows the whistle as the first period comes to an end. Georgia leading 7 0, and we'll return after this message and a word from your local station. Auburn, Alabama, Jordan Hare Stadium, Georgia 7, Auburn nothing. Start the second quarter here, and Pat Hayden, the dogs, did a good job in the first quarter. They jumped ahead. And really, it's been the balance. They've had 56 yards rushing and 56 yards passing. They came into this game as a one-dimensional team, but they've been very balanced today. And they brought a lot of their fans with them. This is second and eight. Now Sagaski quickly moves to the short side. Really the tailback. Here is the toss to him. He runs to the wide side. And that time he was hit early by Greg Staples, one of the hitters for that secondary. So they decided to bring some pressure up in the secondary that time. And Staples got the job done. Some of the best hitters and tacklers are right there in that defense. Greg Staples come in the secondary. Staples and Morris and Cheatham. Those guys are great tacklers back there. So they're going to bring some support from the secondary on that toss sweep to Worley. Georgia in third and eight, and they may have to throw to loosen things up here. Now they flush Johnson fast with that great inside rush, and he almost threw an interception. Should have been picked off by Cheetah. Wayne Hall, the defensive coordinator at Auburn, told me this week it's one thing to get in position to make the interception. The other thing is you have to catch the ball. They spend an awful lot of time, their defensive backs do, on just catching the ball. It's almost like receivers. This time Cheatham plays it well, but he took his eye off it. Joey Hester, honey, for Georgia on fourth down. Shane Wasden, back deep for Auburn, one of the wide receivers, and he hangs it high. There's the fair catch signal. And on the run in the shade, moving to the sun in the shade, it was a tough catch, and he made it there at the 11-yard line. 42-yard punt, a good one by Hester. And when you come back, it'll be Auburn's ball. They trail it by seven thousand plus on hand today one of the big names on this Auburn team is number 85 lawyer Tillman he's the senior from Mobile yet to catch a pass here today he goes to the short side on first down they run down they straight ahead out to the 15 yard line into the arms of Terry Webster number 60 the leading tackler who went right into the chest of Terry Webster he really did Terry Webster was a little bit high and Daly went right into that wide open target what about Tillman? Well, you know, he hasn't caught any balls here today, but he has helped this Auburn team by blocking. He is a big guy, 6'4", 223 pounds. He's thrown a couple of key blocks on the outside that's allowed Danley to make some nice runs. Here's the toss to Danley on the cutback. He has the first down, and he is out to the 26-yard line. Ben Smith tackling it for the dog. About Danley, he can really cut back. He's got great vision. Three times now, he has been very, very patient, waiting for something to happen, and then cut back to the weak side. Unusual. Most cutback runners play on AstroTurf. He has rushed for 70 yards already. But again, we feel that pressure is starting to mount on Reggie Slack. This is the biggest game that the Auburn quarterback has ever been in. And he's going to have to finish off here. deep the far side and it is caught by Tillman first time he's caught the ball Ben Smith defended him over there 
What set this play up was the terrific cushion. Look, he's got 15 yards to run the out pattern. The key is they don't want to get deep, deep, but that is too much cushion. That is just too easy. Then he makes a nice guess to keep his feet in. Tillman goes to the short side on this first and 10. Slack has thrown several times on first down. This time, they'll run Danley straight ahead into a huge hole. Busts out for another first down. Auburn on the move. Demetrius Douglas tackles him, but it's a 17-yard gain. And now the Tigers are stalking that tied touchdown. Again, watch the left tackle, Thompson and King, the left guard here, as they create a little seam here for Danley. And Danley doesn't waste any time in the hole. It's a cutback all the way. King, the freshman, makes a very nice block, and Thompson walls his man outside. Wasden and Wright are the wide receivers. Joseph, the fullback. Slack in on first down. Far side, complete. And they're having a feast over there. Alexander Wright made that reception. 13-yard gain. Throwing the football is a matter of rhythm. And Reggie Slack is beginning to find that. Now, the cushion narrows here. They beat on the out earlier. But see, not nearly as big a cushion this time for Wright. But still, the ball is well thrown and a nice catch. That's Ben Smith, 26, defending on that side, too. They're going to send Wright up against him again for the short side. Here's first and 10. Danley picks his way, finds the hole, runs well. It gets to the 20-yard line. Puts Auburn in second and short with Rusty Beasley making the tackle. Let's go downstairs to John Dockery. Doc, what do you got? You know, Brent, one of the reasons that Georgia's defense is having so many problems is their chief rusher, the man they call the sack, Richard Tardis, has a splint on his right ankle. Can you see it right there? He damaged the ligaments. I asked him before the game how he was. He said, I'll give it a shot, but it's hard to tell. You see him in there in special situations, but that's one of the reasons Georgia's having their problems on defense at the moment. Now back to you, Brent. Dooley also under pressure from Danley, who already has rushed for 96 yards. Auburn shows the wishbone on second and one. And Slack keeps it and rolls to the right side. Cuts inside the 10-yard line. He's down at the nine with Aaron Chubb, the first to hit him. Reggie Slack is an athlete. Watch the fake here, and he's a big guy. He does not look like he's running fast because he is a large man, but he is. And then number 86, Reeves, puts a nice block on the defender for the easy first down. Last time out, Auburn self-destructed with penalties, but not this time. Jamming it right down George's throat. Danley stuffed that time himself by the middle of that door of defense. Brent, when Auburn has struggled this year, it has been inside the 20-yard line. When they get down here, Pat Dye's team needs to score touchdowns, not field goals. A lot of heat the young quarterback. Down by seven points. Second and long. They are inside the 10-yard line, so it's second and goal. slotted Wigan and in motion slack rolls in that direction has Danley out tosses to Tillman for the touchdown drive started we said that lawyer Tillman had not touched the ball yet today they get it in his hands twice including the six pointer and Auburn now only a point behind with Lynn Lyle set up the tie it's a whole new game Brent, every quarterback has a favorite receiver and sometime in the game he's going to find a way to get him the ball Reggie Slack does this on the rollout. Pretty good defense by the Dogs, 
He pulls up and finds the big 6'4 wide receiver in the corner of the end zone. Had a little hum baby on that too. Oh yeah, juice. Zipped it to him. Tied at seven, we'll be right back. Seven, seven, Georgia and Auburn looking for a Southeastern Conference title and a possible trip to the Sugar Bowl. Chris Dickinson with the ball on the tee for Auburn. One of the deep men. There he is, the big fella, Tim Worley. How's he done as a kick returner, Pat? He has one kickoff return for a touchdown this year. He's also thrown two touchdown passes. Ball blows off the tee, so they'll have to re-tee it and start all over. They're on the sideline talking to his assistants, Pat Dye, who has done a marvelous job. He has a program here at Auburn now. They just reload. Drive headed out of bounds, and that'll be a penalty. One of the things about Pat Dye, there have been controversies down here in the past, and certainly I'm not here to defend him over Brent Fullwood, who was not going to class when he let him play in the bowl game that year. But it is kind of interesting to note that after the last professional football season, 15 NFL players came back here to Auburn, Alabama, and resumed their studies. I think that speaks pretty highly of of the program that's being run down here. When those fellows don't graduate, they come back and study some more, and that was 15 of them were on this campus. It's one of those schools you might tend to underestimate academically, too. Things like the veterinarian schools, one of the best in the country, along with Cornell. Dickinson rips it to Worley. He's got it at the goal line. 10, 20, 25, sideline, out of bounds at the 30. Four yard line. So tomorrow, 12:30 Eastern Time, we'll start our NFL coverage. You'll see some of those Auburn grabs. Chicago at Washington, and Mike Ditka says he'll stalk that sideline. The elevator trip too much. We'll talk to Iron Mike. Philadelphia at Pittsburgh tomorrow. Tampa Bay at Detroit. Then the late games. The Giants are down at Phoenix, and New Orleans takes on the Los Angeles Rams. First and ten now for Georgia. Warner, the tight end, moves over to the left side. Henderson is in front of Hampton. Johnson to throw on first down, out of bounds. Incomplete. He wanted Henderson the fullback, and he was going out of bounds. And Alvin Mitchell doing a good defensive job. Second and ten for Georgia at the 34. LSU clinches at least a tie for the Southeastern Conference title with that win. Alabama on the comeback after losing that tough one. Second down and ten. Now Hampton moves back to the tailback spot. Johnson with time incomplete. Too far in front of Warner is tied in. Again, the important thing, though, here for Wayne Johnson is that they're throwing the ball. He's going to have to complete those kinds of passes to win this football game because you're just not going to be able to run it all the time against that Auburn front. There's the play from the sideline. That's Arthur Marshall telling Wayne Johnson. Johnson, the senior quarterback, good size, 6'4", 213. Brings his offense up to the line, looks at that defense. Needs 10 yards on this third down play. We run the quarterback draw. Three of one, out to the 40. Spins, but he's short of that first down. Shan Morris, the son of a former Bear great, Larry Morris, making that stop on the Georgia quarterback and forcing the punt. And the Auburn defense is beginning to really take the run away. And again, for Georgia to win this game, they're going to have to complete some passes on first down. Joey Hester back to punt again. And Wasden to return. We've got nine and a half minutes in the first half. Under pressure that time. On the bounce, and Wasden's going to let it roll. The dogs get a roll. Down inside that 15-yard line. So we'll take a break after that 44-yard punt. We'll come back with Georgia and Auburn all even. Oh, give me land, lots of land under sunny skies above. Don't fence me in. No, you 
UPS delivers to every country in Western Europe, the Pacific Rim, Down Under, and Canada. And because we're so efficient, we can deliver your international parcels and documents for fewer francs, yen, or drachmas than other companies charge. Don't me in. UPS, we run the tightest ship in the shipping business. Going, going, gone. Beer drinkers are knocking the doors down for the full tilt taste of extra gold draft. They're treating every can, every bottle, every 12-pack, or case they can get their hands on like pure gold. Extra gold. When a beer that packs this big a taste comes along, you got to go for it. Good news, bacon lovers. The only bacon Swiss burger with three strips of bacon is staying at Wendy's even longer. So come in now and grab another bacon Swiss burger while they're hot. I had to try this to believe it. Denerex tingles. Tells me it's doing more. Selsun Blue, no tingle. Both Denerex and regular Selsun Blue have dandruff medicine, but Denerex adds an extra anti-itch medicine. So long, Selsun Blue. Hello, Denerex. He's a free agent. He can make the team bigger, faster, stronger. Football six million dollar man, Wilbur Marshall, tomorrow on the NFL Today. This update from New York. Look out, here comes the Heisman candidate, Barry Sanders, scoring his 29th touchdown of the season. Ties the record of Lydell Mitchell and Mike Rozier. That's three scores on the afternoon. He's already over 160 yards rushing, six minutes before halftime. Back to Brent. Those are indeed big-time statistics that he is compiling out there at Oklahoma State. And he is starting to come on strong now in his quest for that Heisman Trophy. Here it is, first and ten for Reggie Schlackenhofer. They're tied at seven with Georgia. Strong, the new fullback, leading Danley. Great defensive play by Barry. Well, Brent, very few of us get to live our dreams, but Rusty Beasley, the free safety, as you watch here, the offensive line comes off. But 58, Barry, comes right in from the backside. Again, got the quick inside penetration because that first step of his was so good. And that's why he made the play in the backfield. And Strong quickly comes out. And they load up with three wide receivers. Wigan, Tillman, and Wasden for slot. Reggie's going to put it up again. Great catch at the 35-yard line. That was Shane Wasden, the freshman from Selma. 5'9", 176 pounds. What Auburn has done with their passing game is done a nice job of throwing the ball short, and then they stretch it vertically. They threw a couple out passes. They threw a couple underneath passes. And then this time, the deep throw to Wasden. Slack impressive here in the last two series for the Tigers. Completed his last four balls. Now has a first and ten. Ball out on the Auburn 37-yard line, and Slack calling a timeout. He came up to the line, saw something he didn't like, and so he will go over and confer with Matt Dye and the assistant coach. We'll take a break. We have eight minutes to go in the first half. Seven all. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Listen to the heartbeat of America. Oh, yeah. The new Chevrolet Corsica, the sports sedan that knows you have more important things to spend your money on, like your family. Ooh, reasons why Coors Light is fast becoming America's shining light. It's fresher, smoother, and so drinkable that when you're out in the town, the silver bullet won't slow you down. Coors Light, the silver bullet. For all the right reasons, it's the right beer now. the difference between the AC Delco parts that go into race cars and the ones that go into your car? 
There isn't any. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. If you want to win, run with a winner. For the AC Delco retailer nearest you, just give me a call at 1-800-AC-DELCO. does look healthy. You know, a couple years ago, he blew out his knee. They had to bring his brother Otto in for him for a couple of games. I thought maybe War Eagle there devoured him. For the moment I was kind of concerned. Here on first down, Danley blasts up into that Georgia defense. And Demetrius Douglas takes him on. And then Hiawatha Berry comes in to clean it up. Danley goes over 100 yards here in the first half. Now that is 17 carries for 101 yards, his third career 100-yard game. So we came into this game singing the praises of Worley, and we may leave talking about number 32, Stacy Danley. And remember, he gets stronger as the game goes on. Worley with 42 yards rushing. Six yards for the first down. Strong the fullback. He is in front of the backup tailback now as Danley comes out and James Joseph, who is the fullback, switches back to tail. And Rusty Beasley made the tackle. Pat, a short time ago, you started a story about Beasley. Well, Rusty Beasley is one of those guys who's actually living his dream. He grew up not far from the Georgia campus. He's the free safety. Probably not big enough or strong enough and fast enough to play free safety, but he's one of those guys you always find room for you on your team because he plays hard and gives you 100% every down. First and 10 for Auburn. Ball at the Georgia 47-yard line. Joseph back at fullback, and Danley returns. And Slack on first down, buys time, and it is complete inside the 40-yard line. It goes to his tight end, Sellers. Boy, if Sellers were able to gather himself, he had a lot more yardage there to be gained, but he couldn't slow himself down, and he ran out of bounds. First down passing has been effective so far for Auburn in this game. Very key in what they have done. They've thrown some balls short over the middle. They've thrown the out pattern to Tillman, and then the deep ball to Wasden. Second and short. Tillman is out the slacks right. Wazed into the short side. Joseph, the fullback, straight ahead. And it will depend on where they spot the ball. Could have been a first down. And I give James Joseph, number 10, a lot of credit for Auburn. He is the guy who started the year as the tailback was going to be the star runner. But then when they needed some real blocking power in the fullback position, they moved him there. He never complained, made the switch, has made a big, big difference in the running attack. They'll bring the chains out to measure. I think he came here because of Bo Jackson. I think they called him Bo Peep in high school. He grew up watching Bo Jackson not too far from the Auburn campus. Really a pleasant kid. Always plays with a smile on his face. Auburn with a fresh set of downs and moving again. They trailed early, 7 to nothing. Rallied to tie the game at 7. Behind Slack and Lawyer Tillman. And now on the move again. Six and a half minutes left in the first half. Slot to the right. Wigan and Tillman. Slack forced out of the pocket. On the move with a penalty marker down. He throws to Joseph underneath for a couple of yards, but there was a penalty marker tossed back near midfield. Now, Brent, I know you and I talked about this all week, and if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan, this game is going the way you want it. You want it just to be close, to hang in there, because Vince Dooley's philosophy for 25 years has to keep it close and win it in the fourth quarter. Offensive lineman, still be first down again. 
another big penalty against the Auburn Tigers. They self destructed on an earlier drive because of penalties. This one will move them back on the other side of midfield. They're back on their own 48 yard line. They have to get to the 27 for a first down. In this situation, you can't turn the ball over. They have Wright, Wasden, and Tillman as their wide men. And Slack stands in the pocket, dropped by Tillman, coming across underneath at midfield. Well, the coaches, Larry Blakeney, the offensive coordinator for Auburn, thought the tight end was going to be open today. He has been. That time, Tillman really played like a tight end for the short route, but he dropped the ball. You know, I saw some of the pros talking the other day about why receivers drop balls. And they are speculating that you should not wear gloves because you lose some of that touch that is so necessary. Tillman that time, failing to hang on. Slack back again. Waiting, waiting. Now he takes off and drops it. And it is bobbled again here by Joseph, who was close to being out of bounds anyhow. Well, he wasn't wearing gloves, but you know, Vince Dooley said the same thing. The same thing this past week about his receivers wearing gloves. When you think about it, if you're just out playing the catch, there is more feel. I know in cold weather you've got to wear the gloves, but I always thought it was unusual to see players in great weather situations like this wearing gloves. I understand them when they wear it on AstroTurf to protect against the burn, but not here on a grass field. Now it is third down. 25 yards to go. That's Wagan, 14. So they've got three wide men on the right side of the formation. Slack goes in that direction. And it is intercepted. Picked off by Lewis. This is how Georgia wins football games, even when they're outmatched. They hang in there on offense. They create turnovers on defense. And Morris Lewis, number 57, makes a terrific catch with a one-handed stab from the outside linebacker position. He's the quarterback is trying to throw it over his head, but he gets that left paw on there with the glove, by the way, <laughs> and makes a nice catch. When you don't, you got a glove on there. So that's a nice, nice play. First and 10 now for Georgia. That's a second turnover by Auburn here in the first half. Johnson will pitch it to the wide man coming back around. And Sean Hummings is buried by Brian Smith. That is the biggest defensive play of the game thus far. Brian Smith, who's played very well here this afternoon, stays at home, was not fooled. That's his responsibility, and he puts the stop on Hummings. A loss of 17 yards on that play. Johnson. Rolling and he'll take off. 45. Stopped at the 47 yard line, but this will still leave Georgia with a third and long. Georgia quarterbacks have always been schooled not to turn the ball over, and that's why he didn't put that one up. Pat, an observation on Johnson. Uh, do you feel that maybe he takes off just a fraction of a count a little too quickly? I think with the coach, yeah, you're probably right, but I think what the coaches are saying, he's a great athlete as a runner. If nobody's open, take off now. 14 yards to go for the first down. Thomas and Hummings are the wide man. The blitz is on, and he won't get it off. Fumble recovered by Auburn at the 33-yard line. Brian Smith belted it, and Benji Rowland recovered it. For a big guy, Brian Smith can really come. He is 6'6", 244 pounds, at the top of the screen, number 90 in a down stance, runs right around the tackle, and comes to the backside of Wayne Johnson. He's supposed to be picked up by Henderson. He misses him. Johnson has no chance. Rowland makes the recovery. No quarterback in the world's got a chance right here with the defender coming full force from the blind side jars the ball loose and that Auburn defense comes up with back to back big plays after the interception. First it was the sack then they forced the fumble they recover. Now Auburn and Reggie 
Jay Slack in striking position. First and ten. The ball is at the dog 34-yard line. Reeves to the right side of the formation. Danley cuts back off the strong side inside the 30-yard line and into the arms of Kurt Douglas. And Bo Schembechler goes back to Pasadena. 38-9 over Illinois. Your old alma mater, Northwestern, playing it tough. Tied at seven. Mind of Ohio <laughs> with a tough season. You're going to have to send your second son out to USC where he can get some wins. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Five yards to go for the first down. Here's Danley behind Joseph. Cuts off that block. Hammers his way inside the 25 and close to a first down. That's Vince Guthrie and Terry Webster. Plenty of time here. Three and a half minutes in the first half. Auburn with a couple of timeouts left. And the ideal situation for Auburn is to use as much of that clock before they score. Don't give Georgia the ball back, but be sure you get the seven, not the three. Third and short. And given that strategy, you would expect them to pound ahead. Joseph will set up in front of them. Wigand and Tillman are the wide men. And here's the fullback, Joseph. Close. Very close. And at the conclusion of this CBS Sports College football broadcast, we'll select a Chevrolet, most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to both Auburn and Georgia. Bye bye, bye bye. They will measure here, so we have an official's timeout at the three-minute mark of the first half. You know, we were talking about Mike Ditka and the fact that he has elected to come down to the sidelines quickly after a heart problem. There's another coach who had heart difficulty, Vince Dooley. That much left for the first down here against Dooley's defense. And Vince was able to recover, and uh, he looks marvelous. He looks great. He's very, very active, works out a lot out there at Georgia. As we said, he's an interesting guy. Remarkable that he's been able to coach to be a head coach for that long in one place. 25th year at Georgia. His defense facing a fourth and inches. Penalty markers come down. Strong was the ball carrier, but there were flags all over the place. Before the play started, a dead ball foul. We had movement by the offense. Still be fourth down. Penalties have really hurt Auburn here in the first half. And like we said earlier, they have struggled when they've got down into scoring territory this year and had to settle for field goals. So instead of a first and ten, they are going to try a field goal. Win Lyle. It'll be a 46-yarder. Attempting to put Auburn ahead. On its way, and he pulled it too much. Game stays tied. Brad, how many games, Georgia games, have you seen like this? When they've really been really outmatched when you think about it, but they've been able to hang in there, create some turnovers, play good defense, and win, find a way to win in the fourth quarter. Exactly. But they have to find a response to this defense right now that has suddenly started to turn it loose. On that last series, the Auburn defense dominated this Georgia offense. Now it's first and ten. The ball on their own 29-yard line. Sadowski the tight end over at the left. Ellis back in. They'll run the fullback straight ahead. He comes to the 33, and Tracy Rucker brings him down. Well, West Virginia rolling toward the Fiesta Bowl. A win today, and they'll go down there. Arkansas leading Texas A&M. We'll see the Razorbacks down to the Orange Bowl two days after Thanksgiving. You get all the full details from Jim Nance coming up at halftime. Second down and six. That's Hummings in motion. And Johnson rolling in that direction. Got in too close to the defender. And Brian Smith brought him down. Brian Smith is playing 
exceptionally well. He has run around blockers, he's run through blockers, and he's made a couple of sacks. Again, top of the screen here, number 90, bites off the block of the tackle, goes right over him into the quarterback, Wayne Johnson. He's got tremendous sense and big size, 6'6", he can jump right over those blockers. Third and 15 for Georgia. Tackled immediately by Tracy Rock. Timeout. And while we have an opportunity, let's take a look at these two schools Auburn and Georgia. Georgia held the minus 12 yards here in the second quarter. They get the punt off. Wasden tracks it down. Boy, he'll go after it, won't he, toward that sideline? 34-yard punt. And 48 seconds left here in the first half with one timeout. And Slack has some good deep receivers. Last week, he was able to bust Wigan over the middle. With one timeout remaining, they can still work the middle of the field as well as the outside route, so they can use both kind of routes here. Show a slot to the wide side. Tillman, the slot man, select... Slack goes underneath exactly that pack. And I'll tell you, that little Wasden puts on a show, gets a first down. So at 40 seconds, they will momentarily stop the clock and reset the chains, and they don't have to use their timeout. Georgia is dropping the nose tackle, Goldberg, back in coverage. Clock starts again. Referee's signal. And Slack straight back, throws the swing to Dan Lane. 45. 40, down at the 37, inside of 30 seconds now. The Georgia team is calling for a timeout. The Georgia coaches are asking for a timeout, which gives that surprises me because it gives Auburn plenty of time to sort things out. Now the official signal that he wanted the timeout, Pat. I think he wants it here for a measure. Measurement, yeah. Again, that's I think a he, he made the signal pointing to himself. Let's see. Uh, if we can't get confirmation on that. I, I don't think the dogs called timeout. They did not. We get word they did not. It was the officials. So Auburn gets a break. They've got 27 seconds. One timeout left. Tillman goes off to the right with Wagan. Remember, they brought Wagan in motion on their touchdown. And they influence the defense. Slack, under pressure, throws incomplete to stop the clock. And the rush champion from France was on the field for Georgia. Richard Tardis, number 92, one of the great stories in college football. Up until five years ago, he had never seen a college football game, didn't realize there was such a thing. Only knew about professional football, came from the south of France, and now is their leading pass rusher. And when he finishes at Georgia with his six degrees or whatever, he's got to go down to Australia and New Zealand and play Australian rules football. He is a true renaissance man. Second and 10 for Slack. 18 seconds left here for Auburn. As time throws far side to Wigan, and he is down inside the 30-yard line with 11 seconds to go. Time enough, certainly, to attempt a field goal. Actually, you have plenty of time, really, to take two shots at the end zone, maybe two passes to the end zone, and then kick the field goal. Timeout again, Paul as they measure that gain on the far side. So getting close to a first down, helping the Auburn offense stay regrouped. Well, time out, they get their play sequence set in, and that is the distance needed for the first down. They can get it stopped here again, but with 11 seconds to go, you would expect them to throw it down into the end zone. I tell you, the fact that the ball is close to uh, the first down two times now has really given the Auburn Tigers a chance to regroup. And if Auburn was watching Monday Night Football, they'll remember what happened to Bernie Kosar and the Cleveland Browns. When you've got 11 seconds, you don't want that clock to go out all the way without attempting the field goal. There's a situation where you like to give your big guy, Tillman, all six, four of them, a chance in the end zone against a short defensive back.
slot, straight back, waits for his receivers to get to the end zone, throws incomplete. Five seconds left, and now you'll have to attempt your field goal. And here they come. Win Lyle. Opportunity for Auburn to take the lead to the intermission. It's a 44-yarder. He's 10 of 17. His longest this year is 41 yards. This would be his longest of the season if he can hit it. On its way. He's got it. Auburn leads. Lyle's longest field goal of the season. Let's go to New York, and here's Jim Nance. Take it away, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Brent. What a day Barry Sanders is having. The outstanding running back from Oklahoma State. Over 200 yards in the first half and four touchdowns. It's a record-setting day for Sanders. We'll show you highlights as he goes for more records in the second half. Also, we'll hear from Bruce Skinner. He's the executive director of the Fiesta Bowl as we try to shape up the bowl picture. Era, Parsegan, and more coming up after this message and a word from your local station.
Auburn. They lead Georgia by three, 10 7. Already LSU has won today. Worley from a yard deep, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Worley explodes at midfield, and he is down at the 41 with Elton Billingsley, 47, perhaps saving a touchdown. A 59-yard return by Worley to start the second half. And all you need to do is give Worley just a little bit of a crease. It was set up beautifully. There was a little hole there, and he picked his way through it, picked up a nice block by Henderson. And it was just Billingsley, number 47, who came from behind, who stopped him. Great block by John Allen, a freshman linebacker, to help spring him. Now Johnson with the dogs at the line of scrimmage. Here's the toss to Hampton. Hampton behind Ellis. Cuts in for about a four-yard gain on that play. Crosses the 40-yard line. Tremendous field position in their opening series here for the dogs. And Hampton runs off. He came out of, the, out of Texas in the Southwest Conference, wanted to avoid the turmoil down there, wanted to play in the I formation, and that's why Hampton came to Georgia. And as he leaves, Worley returns. He'll be the tailback behind Ellis. Sadowski backs a yard off the line and comes down it in motion. Now to the short side. Worley on a quick cutback. Powers his way close to a first down at the 30-yard line. Quentin Riggins wrapping him up. We were told that he's very powerful, and that's one of the few times today where he has taken on a defender. And the right guard and left tackle both do a nice job. Number 75, Scott Adams, he pulls and traps. Looks at, look at the left tackle, 72, Collie. And they created a little seam there for Worley to run through. First and 10 for the Dogs on the Auburn 30. The toss to Worley. Bread and butter for the Bulldogs. Worley in a foot race. They stretch him out and take him down with Craig Ogletree, 94. Bringing him down. Well, Pat, halfway mark and some of those numbers from the first half. You know, as the second quarter was all Auburn, as you can see. The rushing yards, Danley, 110 yards. Really has played very, very well. Other than the first drive that Worley had, he only had very few yards rushing. Now in second and 12 as the result of that loss. Hampton is back. He's the tailback behind Henderson. Sadowski to the left. This is Hampton powering ahead, and he is wrapped up at the 30-yard line. This is going to leave Georgia in third and long. And Ron Stallworth, 92, another of those talented defensive players for the Tigers. In on that stop. I was talking to Ron Stallworth this week, and what he said is, we are like family out here. I know the guys next to me. I've played with them for three or four years. I know exactly what they're going to do. Hampton still the tailback for Georgia. Johnson to throw on third down. Stallworth again, one of the defenders. Benji Rowland and Brian Smith also were there. There's usually one more than one Auburn defender around the quarterback. As you said, Rowland was there, Smith was there, as well as Stallworth. So Steve Crumley will attempt a field goal, which can tie this game. It'll be a 46-yard field goal attempt by Steve Crumley. Check that. That is Casey. That is Casey here from this distance who they'll go with number three, the soccer style kicker. He hammers it. And he ties the game. Casey ties the game in the early moments of the second half. Georgia 10, Auburn 10. We'll be right back with the Bulldogs kickoff. Jordan Hare Stadium with John Dockery and Pat Hayden. I'm Brent Musburger. Auburn 10, Georgia 10. Casey to kick it off for the dogs. Wasden, the deep man for Auburn. And Vince Dooley. Time to win number 200 and go for another Southeastern Conference title. Picked up by Henry Love. And Love works his way to the 25 yard line. A reminder next Saturday is a big one in college football. Here's the doubleheader for you. We'll start at noon. You'll see the top ranked team, Notre Dame, off today, taking on Penn State. For Penn State, that's their bowl game. They'll go into South Bend. 
And they'll be looking for an upset. Then the annual classic coming along to Norman, Oklahoma. It's the Sooners in Nebraska. Can't wait for that one. But right now, Nebraska has its hands full with Colorado in the fourth quarter. They lead it seven to nothing. And on first down, Danley, who had 100 yards, is stood up by Demetrius Douglas, number 53. And Ugga liked that hit. <laughs> He changed his expression when the dogs tied ahead behind him. He always has that smile on his face, doesn't he? You know, I, what about your daughter who's about to celebrate her birthday, mm -hmm. Natalie Hayden? She is 10 years old today. She told me to bring Ugga 4 home. I don't know if I get him on the plane through the metal detector, but I may. <laughs> Second down now. Reggie Slack is back, drops it over underneath. And that is complete to his running back for a first down. Again, with the short passes due there, though, Brent, they force those linebackers to come up and play tight to the line of scrimmage, and that sets up the deeper passes and the intermediate passes, and Auburn has all three layers in their passing attack. Ball is at the Auburn 37. They're coming out. First and 10. Reggie Slack, even though he threw one interception, overall was impressive in the first half. Joseph is in front of Danley. He's the fullback. He can go to tailback. They'll fake and throw it again on first down. That's been their tendency. And again, they come underneath. They work it to the very fine tight end, Walter Reeves. David Hargett making the stop for the dogs. But it's going to leave them in second and short. And Reggie Slack's passing so far. He has been an accurate quarterback this year, completing 62% of his pass passes. But watch how he spreads the ball around, threw it to eight different receivers in the first half. Most of those this today have been downfield. Danley, middle of that defense, taking him on near that first down spot. Terry Webster was certainly in there, the leading tackler for the dogs coming into this game, number 60, and a lot of his teammates joining in. With Brent Ed King, the left guard for Auburn, the freshman we've talked about a couple times, has really played well today. And it's been unusual. I think offensive guard is the difficult, most difficult position to come in and play right away because so many different things happen at the guard position. There he is, Ed King. You have to really work with your, the center on your right, the tackle on your left. You have to be able to pull and trap. But he's been able to come in and make an immediate contribution. LSU already a winner. They have clinched at least the co-championship in the Southeastern Conference. If Georgia wins, they will be in a tie with LSU. But if Auburn wins, they still must beat Alabama to gain a share of the Southeastern Conference championship. I know that Pat Dye is very much aware of Georgia's reputation in the fourth quarter. He wants to get some scores here in the third quarter. He doesn't want a close game in that fourth quarter. A short yardage formation. Danley for the carry, and he has the first down. Demetrius Douglas making the stop, and Auburn moves the chains here at the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. Most physical football teams like Auburn is really don't come up with too many big plays in the passing game, but Auburn has been a little bit different this year. They're a physical team in the offensive line and on defense, but they still can come up with big passing plays. First down near midfield for the Tigers. Their only loss this year in Baton Rouge by one point to LSU. The Tigers pulled that one out in the last minute and 40 seconds. The blitz is on. Slack steps away from it. Gets it off incomplete, but he was under heavy pressure that time. That was Aaron Chubb blitzing for the dogs. He plays very, very nonchalantly back there, doesn't it? Chubb was screaming down on him. He just gave him a little sidestep, made him miss, and then they got the, the pass off. Very cool leader, isn't he? And there's a penalty marker down on the far side, the far 50. A penalty marker was thrown, and that's why they're conferring there, and Georgia indicating that they want this one declined. At illegal procedure against the offense, there was only six men on the line of scrimmage. Be second down, the penalty is declined. 
Pat Sullivan, the assistant coach who won the Heisman Trophy here at Auburn, has really done a nice job working with Reggie Slack on his fundamentals. Came in as, there is Pat uh, Sullivan in the orange jacket there, signaling in the play, but really worked very hard with Slack's fundamentals. Wasden and Wagan are the wide receivers. Strong is the fullback, and Joseph now the tailback, and Joseph gets the carry. To the 48-yard line with David Hargett tackling him for the dogs. When I think of some of the great Auburn teams of the last five or six years ever since Pat Dye has been here, it has been the offensive line which I've been most impressed with. And I think Neil Calloway, the offensive line coach at Auburn, has done a great job with these guys through the years. They come off low, they keep their feet moving, and they get their helmets right in the chest of the defenders. Third and six, right. Wigan and Wasden, the wide receivers. Wigan in motion. And they will toss to Danley, but it is well defended, and Danley breaks the tackle and works his way to the 45, where it will be fourth down. Rusty Beasley tackling him, and a chance now to watch one of the more efficient punters in college football. Number one, Brian Schulman, all year has specialized on dropping the ball inside the 20-yard line. He'll stand with his own 41. Hangs it high, and Carswell with a fair catch. There it is again at the 16-yard line. Schulman has backed him up. Tough field position for the Bulldogs against this very good Auburn defense. We'll be right back. For the SEC crown, special teams can win a ball game for you. Watch the coverage that Schulman gets on this punt. It was only a 28-yard punt, but no return by Carswell. And that forces Georgia to go 84 yards to get in the end zone. Schulman takes the play-by-play -play after every game and studies the impact of his punting. He says, I can't win a game, but I can sure lose one if I don't do my job adequately. Now it is first and ten. The dogs are in a hole. Coming out from their own 16-yard line. Whirling to the short side, picks his way for a couple of yards out to the 19-yard line, and Steve Brown tackling him. Let's go to Jim Nance in New York. Now, Brent, here's the latest on the Barry Sanders watch, his fifth touchdown of the day. He's got 266 yards rushing and still four minutes left in the third quarter. Let's go back to Brent. Would have been nice if he had gone to Northwestern with his brother. <laughs> Second down and long now for the dogs. They would have made him a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Whirling the tailback. He's got the call. He is forced wide. And he is out of bounds at the 26-yard line. And it's going to be close to a first down. Cheatham giving chase. Did you see what Worley did as he got near the first down marker? He really went for it on the corner. He was under fire. He's an amazing guy because he can ha he has the explosion to go 70 yards. He can get you two tough yards. And I was talking to Ron Stahl with a defensive end from Auburn. He said he's the kind of back that can really embarrass you. He can really make you look bad. Third and short. Ellis and Henderson are the blockers in front of Worley. Whoa, was he stood up that time. What a hit by Smokey Hodge. Smokey Hodge did a sensational job of reading the play. He is number 56 right here in the middle of your screen. He sees the guard blocks down and steps up. Sees the guard blocks down, he takes the fullback on, and he just knocks Worley's head back. That's a great play by Hodge. Alfonso Ellis, number 33, missing the block as he was coming out. Joey Hester standing at the Georgia 10 to punt. Wasden on the move. Drops back to the 31-yard line. And Georgia downs him right there. So a fine punt by Joey Hester. 44 yards and only a one-yard return. Both special team units doing well. When Pat Dye came here, he 
stood out and looked at this stadium and he saw some of the old wooden rickety seats. He said one of the first things I want to do is improve the plant here. So they closed it out. Paul Connor is the director of facilities. They brought him in. There's a wire fence down there. They put a hedge up around it. Beautiful flowers. One of the most gorgeous facilities in the land. Now Danley, the ball carrier. Bill Goldberg. Auburn indicating that they kept the ball right there. And this is the situation in a game where the offensive line really has to either win or lose this game, I think, for Auburn. The defense has done their job. It's up to the offensive line of Auburn now. That was Bob Meeks coming through and recovering that fumble, so they certainly did their job right there. It was a seven-yard gain. The ball came loose, and he pounced on it. Second down for Slack on the offense. Reeves coming in motion. Danley. There's a penalty marker down. That was Terry Webster tackling Danley as the penalty flag flew. Terry Webster, the inside linebacker, really did a nice job there, Brent. He will stand in there on the inside and take anybody on as he did Danley there. times for 65 yards and at critical times now it'll be second and 13 for slack they'll give him an extra wide receiver Tillman Wigan and Wasden Joseph and Danley are the running backs First down. You know, you marvel at guys like Wasden. Some guys have great speed. Some guys have great size. Wasden has neither of those, but he's got a great feel for the game. Knows how to get open, and when you throw him the ball, he's going to catch it. 5'9", 176 from Selma, Alabama. He's going to come over here to the side as the play is sent in. Wigand and Wright are the wide men. Reeves back in the game. Danley on the toss behind Joseph. And he is hit right there by Vince Guthrie, number 54. I think you need balance to win in college football these days in offense. You look at the play selection that Auburn has had on first down. They've rushed 14 times and passed 12. And first down is always the key. Georgia, meanwhile, lurking in the neighborhood. Waiting for that mistake. Second and nine inside of 430 in the third quarter. Auburn and Georgia are tied at 10. Loser's going to be out in the race for the Southeastern Conference title. Slack. Slack down the middle of Wagan. Wagan breaks and he's got it inside the 10-yard line. He beat David Hargett. First and goal for Auburn. Deep pass to Wagan was set up by the earlier shorter passes that Auburn threw. They threw some short passes over the middle. They hit the tight end. This time they go deep. The safety gets beaten. The corner gets beaten. That's target, and that ball is well thrown. Wagan just runs under it for an easy catch. And a 40-yard gain, making it first and goal at the Georgia nine-yard line. Joseph in front of Danley. Double tight end. Here's Danley. He gets up to the seven-yard line, and it'll be second and goal. Paul Giles tackling it for Georgia. Very important for Auburn to get the ball into the end zone and not settle for the field goal here. Matt Sullivan, the Heisman Trophy winner, signaling the play in. He was the one-time Auburn quarterback. That die right alongside of him, monitoring every call here. Lawyer Tillman, who caught a touchdown pass in the first half, is out to the right. Sellers and Reeves, the tight end. And Slack rolls to the left, buys time, lobs for the tight end, touchdown, Walter Reeves. Extra 
point. Perfect. Auburn up by seven. Brent, some quarterback with strong arms can't take something off the ball when they have to. But that was a perfect example of Reggie Slack just taking a little bit off as he found Walter Reeves at big tight end in the middle of the end zone. And the pressure is on the Georgia offense. They must have a touchdown. Well, they'll turn a seven-point lead over to Benji Rowland and friends. And it's going to be hard going for Georgia right now. They scored on their first drive of the game their touchdown, and they have not scored a touchdown since, settling for a field goal here in the early moments of the third quarter. Now they're down by a touchdown. They kick it away from Worley this time. They go to the short man at the 25-yard line, and he busts out to the 41-yard line. Troy Sadowski, the tight end, with a good return. Let's go down to John Docker. You know, Brent, if you've been looking for David Rocker, you won't find him on the field because he's down here on a bench. He re-injured his left ankle. They, he's not going to play for the rest of his day. Also, interesting footnote from the Auburn defensive coaches. They say the key to the Georgia offense is the man you just mentioned, number 87, Sadowski. Follow him, and that's what will happen with the Georgia offense. They've been warning their team. Back to you, Brent. All right, John. He is over on the left side. Now he'll back off, and he'll come in motion changing the strength of the formation and they run away from him. Here is Worley down the short side and he is stopped just short of midfield. Greg Staples and John Wiley. An interesting point that John Dockery makes because if they are following where Sadowski is going, they slant to him, but this time they run away from Sadowski and Worley shows you the power. 215 pounds. Again, terrific vision from the man as well. 12 rushes for 65 yards. Remember, no back has gained better than 100 yards this year against this defense. Ellis in front of Werther. Two yards for the first down. Johnson off the fake. Has time over the middle and incomplete. He wanted Hummings. And Cheatham was all over him. Number 35, Carlo Cheatham. That was terrific coverage by Cheatham. And Cheatham is a guy who plays so aggressively, Georgia thought they could get a big play on him. He likes to come up and support the run, but he did a beautiful job of covering Hummings there one-on-one. -on -one. Wayne Johnson, only two of six, has not completed a pass since that first drive. Zadowski comes to the right side of the formation. And Worley short of that first down. Wiley was over there with Smokey High, number 56. They call him Smokey. His first name is Ernest. I guess when your name is Ernest, you want to be called Smokey, but he has done a very nice job inside. He stopped Worley on a short yardage play twice now in this half. I wouldn't want to go to the Sugar Bowl and play this bunch either. <laughs> they can play some defense. I'd say. Joey Hester standing on his 35. Wasden back deep. There's the fake. They go to the short man, and the penalty marker comes down. Keith Henderson got a first down, but the penalty marker comes down. There might have been an ineligible receiver downfield. And I don't know how you have an ineligible receiver downfield when you have a fake punt. But that's what they called. And it was set up beautifully for Henderson. He might be stalking whoever made that mistake. Man on the field at the ball participating 15 yard penalty. Still fourth down. It was 12 men on the field. That was the problem. And that is a problem. That's the first penalty <laughs> against Georgia here this afternoon. Now Hester standing back on his 20. He'll punt it this time. Hangs it high. He has punted beautifully all afternoon. Lost him with a fair catch at the 20 yard line. Well, tomorrow, a lot of these former dogs and tigers will go to war. The Chicago Bears.
Yankees and the Washington Redskins, the big one at RFK. The skin's always tough at home. Then Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Buddy Ryan under fire, and a lot of rumors down south about Jimmy Johnson going to that job. Tampa Bay at Detroit. The Giants are at Phoenix late. Along with New Orleans at the Rams. There's a five-star attraction. The Saints need that one. They may act out of desperation tomorrow. They've lost two in a row now. First and ten for Slack and the Tigers. Reeves had caught the touchdown. Moves over to the left side of the formation. Joseph, the fullback, into the middle of that defense. No running room there. Douglas, number 53, leading the defensive effort. You know, most I formation teams like to give the ball to the fullback once every other lunar eclipse. But Auburn really does incorporate that fullback into their offense a lot more than most teams. James Joseph has been a big factor today at fullback. For those of us who are not road scholars, that means infrequently. Yeah, that means not so often. <laughs> Second down now and long for Auburn. Slack brings the offense up. Tillman is slotted to his left. Wigan is out wide. Slack in with good time. Over the middle deflected and incomplete. Demetrius Douglas dropping back and deflected it. Wow. That's an Andre Tiger. Thought for a minute it was Irk Russell he was working on, but I <laughs> moved over to George Sutton. Wow. Irk has done a great job over there. He has done. show on the road, too. He was their former defensive coordinator. Dog fans remember him so well from the Herschel Walker days. Timeout has been called. Timeout by Auburn, their first one. You know, he'll come over and talk to Pat Dye. Uh, got an opportunity to see the other side of Pat Dye on Friday when all the haze in the barn. He heads out here out of town about, oh, 20, 25 minutes. Got about 1,000 acres out here. And he just loves it. I like all this attention, these visitors. Step on to relax. Hey, yeah, I can I can come out here for 30 minutes, an hour, or just ride out here and ride back. You come in. Come in. That's a great place to put all the problems of big time football behind you. I almost stayed out there. He's got a bunkhouse. I said, next time I come to town, I'd like one of those bunks. His wife loves the horses, Pat. She raised the Colts out there. There are a couple of them. He's picked up another one. He's got seven dogs, probably as many wild turkey as anybody in this part of Alabama. Coach to East Carolina, went to Wyoming. And he really got his chance here because Vince Dooley turned the job down. They almost brought Dooley back from Georgia to be the coach and the athletic director at Auburn and Pat Dye has certainly made the most of his opportunity. I guess that's the only dog that Pat doesn't like. His favorite foods are chicken and fish. Out is third down for Dye's quarterback Slack and again that offensive line gives him time. He hits Wake and first down. You know, Brent, you made a good point about this is being Reggie Slack's first big game as a starting quarterback at Auburn, but I have been impressed with him. All the big plays he has needed in this game, he's come up with. That one on a third and eight. He's at 17 of 28 for 220 yards and two touchdown passes and only one interception. And Georgia couldn't do anything with the interception. Now it is first and ten. Most of it that time. Vince Guthrie and Aaron Chubb were there as we come to the end of the third quarter. Auburn leading Georgia 17 10. College football on CBS returns after this message and a word from your local no, 15 minutes of a good ball game coming your way from Auburn, Alabama. 17 10. The Tigers with the lead, and here's how they got there. Georgia struck first on its opening series. 7 0 on a touchdown pass, but Tillman. Got a throw from Reggie Slack, tied at seven, and then the Tigers went ahead on a 44-yard field goal. That was a halftime margin. Then Casey nailed a 46-yarder. It was deadlocked again before Reeves caught Slack's second touchdown pass. 17-10, fourth quarter underway, and this is second and six for the Tigers against the Georgia defense. Here is Dan Lee, who's had a big-time day. He's hit by Virgil Cole, number 98, and that will leave them 
at about a third and seven. And again, another important third down for Reggie Swack. He has met the challenge most of this game on third and passing downs. Another important one for him here. Some confusion with the receivers right now. And the 25 second clock starting to run down. So with the extra wide man, Slack gets it off in time and throws complete to Tillman. First down, and again, Reggie Slack with the big play. And Reggie Slack came up holding his right hand. You can see him shaking it there. But again, watch Tillman. For a big guy, he moves his body pretty well. He runs away from the defender, number 57, Lewis, who's really a linebacker, so they had a nice matchup they wanted. But Reggie falls on his hand, the right hand right there, and he came up shaking it. A lot of times after that happened, Brent, you don't know for a while that you really hurt that right hand. For the first down at midfield, Slack will throw again on first down. And he's got Tillman wide open, and it is hit at the last instant, and interference is called. Rusty Beasley came over defensively. Reggie Slack first print shows an awful lot of patience in the pocket there. He hung in there. He knew he was going to get hit. Automatic first down. It's a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. The automatic first down. You can take another look at it. I think they really called it on Hargett, number 25, who went diving right into it. Where did the ball hit him? Did you get a good view of that, Pat? It hit the helmet of uh, Beasley, number 20. Oh, I, th I thought Beasley really interfered with him that time. I don't think there was any chance for him to even see the ball coming down. Slack on the roll, throws underneath and complete. It is tight end Walter Reeves and Slack driving the Tigers again, a 16-yard completion after the pass interference penalty. And Reggie Swack has done a nice job today of using his tight end reads. We saw him caught a short uh, touchdown pass earlier. Well, your tight end is a big receiver. He's 6'4", he's 250 pounds. He roams that middle on his own defense. He's been open all day, and Slack has used him. Joseph and Danley, the running backs. Wright and Wazd in the wide man. And that's Reeves moving over to the left side. Him up. If Georgia is going to win this game, they are going to have to stop Auburn here and force a field goal attempt. They cannot afford the way their offense is playing to allow Auburn to score another touchdown. Second and long, and Slack has answered the challenge. He's come up with big plays. Maybe the marvelous second half. Take the Danley, drops underneath and incomplete. He was going to go to look at Mark Sellers, the other tight end, and Terry Webster was there defensively. Third and 11. Now this is the most important third down for the Georgia defense. Here's where they have to have good pass coverage and a rush and force a, a sack or an incomplete pass and then force the field goal attempt. Wright and Wasden, the wide receivers for Coach Dye. Tillman goes to the slot to the left side. Auburn must get inside the eight-yard line for a first down. Slack lofts it to the end zone, incomplete, and over Wright's head with Ben Smith there defensively. And now they will go for the field goal when Lyle comes onto the field. He is one for two here this afternoon. Made his longest of the season earlier. Now he will attempt a 36-yarder. And the punter, Brian Schumann, will hold it for him. He's got it. It's a 10-point Auburn lead with 12 and a half minutes to go.
Oklahoma State's Barry Sanders with this run sets another record. He goes over 300 yards for the third time this season. First player ever to do it three times in one year. Remember, Reuben Mays has the single game mark at 357. And there's eight minutes left in the contest. Now, Nebraska's a final over Colorado as Ken Clark scored the only touchdown of the game as we go back to Brent. Jim, we'll have Nebraska, Oklahoma following Notre Dame and Penn State for you. Here, Auburn, Shandy War Eagle. They lead it by 10 with 12 and a half minutes to go. That's Henderson, 15, 20 to the 25-yard line. Well, Troy Aikman at last shot. He was battling Stanford this afternoon, down by four points. He needs to come on strong now that Barry Sanders has made a rush. Rodney Pete of USC, unbeaten. He's certainly in the chase. And it looks like we got a contest. Boy, oh, yeah. he is really coming on. Barry Sanders would be a very worthy winner. Georgia needs something to climb back in it. Worley the tailback. Here's the toss to him. They run behind Henderson. Defensively, Quentin Riggins ready. Quentin Riggins is only 5'11", 210 yards, but he has a heart the size of the state of Alabama. He plays hard all game long. Well, Pat, what would you do against this Auburn defense if you were the quarterback or the offensive coordinator? How, how would you attack it? They're dominating. I, I think you have to throw the ball. You have to complete some passes. Maybe a screen, a little dink to your tight end. They have not used Sadowski in the passing game. Johnson will throw. It's deflected at the line of scrimmage and falls incomplete. That was Brian Smith, who's played a terrific game. Smith has done just about everything today. He has rushed the passer. He has played the sweep. That time he tipped the ball. The number 90 right there in the middle of your screen. Watch. This is a lost art. Guys don't do enough of this. He gets up, gets that big old left paw on it, and almost enough to create an interception. How does this Auburn defense compare with all the ones you've seen this year? The best by a long shot. No doubt. Third down. Johnson trying to get something going against this defense. Backs up. Forced out of the pocket. There's a penalty flag down. Stallworth gets him out of bounds. It's incomplete, but there is a penalty marker down. the holding and that's what happens when a, when a lineman feels so much that it was on Kurt Ball when, on Tracy Rocker when a lineman feels that much pressure that his quarterback is getting it's the only thing he can do to try to create uh, prevent the sack Georgia forced the punt Hester standing on his own six yard line booms one and drives Wasden back to the 31 yard line and he's down at the 35. Great punting today by Joey Hester. That's a 47-yarder and a four-yard return. Auburn with a chance to run the clock down. We'll be right back. LSU today wrapped up at least a tie for the Southeastern Conference. Georgia needing a win today. Auburn needs one here. Then they must beat Alabama. The Crimson Tide out of it. And the Tiger oh, fans. Thousand folks on hand here this afternoon. They lead it by 10 points with 11 and a half minutes to go. Auburn's ball on their own 35 yard line, and now Pat Dye will go to work on that clock. They start Danley on the toss, running him wide. He cuts back up. He's had a sensational afternoon running the football. Bill Goldberg, the nose man, backing off. Danley has carried 31 times for 139 yards here this afternoon. And the amazing thing, Brent, he looks fresh. He looks like he wants to tote the ball another 10 times here in the fourth quarter. Second and three for Auburn. Now the toss to the wide side with Danley. 
breaks through. There's a penalty flag down. Danley gets to the 47 yard line for a first and 10, but the penalty flag thrown. You know, Brandon, as Auburn has opened up this 10 point bulge, this is not what Joe, uh, Vince Dooley wanted in the fourth quarter. The defense is going to have to come up with some sort of turnover to get back in the ball game. And holding by an offensive lineman at the line of scrimmage, 10 yard penalty still be second down. That's been the biggest weakness in the Auburn game here this afternoon against Coach Dooley. Seven penalties for 75 yards against Auburn. And the ball is marched off back to the Tigers 32 yard line. And instead of a first and 10, it'll be second and 13. Clock down to 10 and a half minutes. Tell Jim Nance to get that post game show ready in New York, boys. <laughs> Second down. Here's Slack off the play fake. Stands in that pocket and throws beautifully underneath to Danley, the running back. He's out to the 44, and Demetrius Douglas brings him down. It'll be third and long. Well, that's a play I don't think teams use enough. You fake the ball to the tailback, and then he runs that little delay for you. He was wide open before Douglas found him. Reeves had left the formation, and now he returns. Wakehand and Tillman are off to Slack's left. Auburn forced to punt it away. Nine and a half minutes. You may get a measurement here. Wagan signaling he got it. He did. First down, Auburn. And that's a big play. It was only one yard, but it got you a chance to have four more downs and use some more of the clock. Big first down for the Tigers. There's a remarkable calm about that man, Reggie Slack. You talk to his teammates, and they are amazed about his poise and presence and just the calm about the man. Ball at the 45 of Auburn. They lead it by 10. This is Dan Lake. Sweeps outside to the left. Norman Cowens wraps him up, but this will put him in second and short, and the clock continues to move. Downstairs to John Dockery. Doc. Thank you, Brett. This is Walter Jew of Dallas Cowboys Scout. And Walter, why do the Auburn players do so well in a pro? Well, I think there's two reasons, uh, John. Number one, Coach Dyer really demands a lot of the physical game. I mean, they take a lot of physical uh, abuse and, and work, and when they get to our place, they're not intimidated. Another thing is they're playing in front of 85,000 people in a big, tough uh, pressure situation, so when they get to an NFL training camp, they're not intimidated. Walter, if you'd stay with me for a minute, we're going to go upstairs and come back down. Second and short here. And they don't get the job done that time as Terry Webster comes in on James Joseph. And uh, let's go back down. A hey, uh, Doc, yes. I thought Gil Brandt was the only scout for the uh, Dallas Cowboys. Let's go back downstairs. They actually have more of an organization than just Gil Brandt. What about Jim Worley? What kind of a player is he? Well, I, I'm looking forward to evaluating him next year. But right now, he's the closest thing I've seen to, you know, kind of a... Uh, mix between Bo Jackson and our guy Herschel Walker and even Brent Fullwood who played here at Auburn. Boy, those, that's a lot of praise. Now back to you, Brent. All right, Doc. Thank you very much. Third down. So the scouts looking beyond the tough afternoon and they still see that raw talent there from Tim Worley. Three yards to go for the first, Pat. And this third down is the, de is the game for the Georgia defense right here. And Slack will put it up. Throws incomplete, and they hold. And this time, they have forced the punt by Schulman. Terry Webster and Vince Guthrie over there on coverage for Coach Dooley. The Georgia defense really has done their job. Now it's up to Wayne Johnson to complete a couple passes to give the dogs a chance. What about going after this punt? You, know, you have to do that sometimes. Special teams can win a ball game for you as well. Just set the return. Schulman angling one. Beautiful punt. And it got into the end zone for a touchback. Almost bounced up there at the one, didn't it? So it'll be first and ten for Georgia. 
Ball on the 20 when we come back. See the possessions by Georgia. That tells the story right there. And I think the real key has been they haven't completed any passes since that first drive. Everyone satisfied here in Auburn? <laughs> you bet. First and 10, Georgia at the Bulldog 20 yard line. He'll stay a football fan all his life. First and 10. Hampton goes in motion for Johnson, and now they'll throw on first down. He throws to Hampton, who had swung out, busts back to the 25, 30, and on out to the 38 with Alvin Mitchell bringing him down, a 13-yard gain. And that's the perfect kind of pass for Georgia to run. Not high risk, it's a little screen pass. You give a guy like Rodney Hampton a chance to get out in the open field. First and 10, Georgia, at the 33. Hampton, the tailback. Thomas and Hummings are the wide men. Hampton again out and under great pressure. He throws complete to Hummings. And another first down. And Johnson was under enormous pressure from Craig Ogletree. Wouldn't this be something? And that means uh, USC would go to the Rose Bowl regardless of what happens next week. Michigan advancing to the Rose Bowl today. Play the Pac-10 representative. Now first and 10. Here's the toss to Hampton. Picking his way and ever so quickly that hole closes with Smokey High. You know, fancy offense wins some games, but defense wins championships. And what you're seeing here by Auburn is a championship-style defense. Smokey Hodge on the inside as the linebackers played remarkably well. And Brian Smith, the outside linebackers, had a great game, too. Six and a half minutes. Georgia needing to hurry. Straight back, Stallworth on him. There's the penalty marker down, indicating that there was holding. Pass was incomplete, intended for Warner, the tight end, who had replaced Sadowski. That protective pocket starting to break down. When you allow this Auburn defense to tee off, it is really something. What makes them great pass rushers, Brent, is they have a great first step and escape move. All stalwarts, Roland, and Rock. Holding on the play by the offensive team. Repeat second down at the 10 yard. You know, I don't blame an offensive lineman for holding. A lot of times you don't get caught. You hold them and hope it no one sees you. Georgia penalized 10 yards. Arthur Marshall brings the play in from the sideline. Second down, about 19 yards to go for the first down. Henderson and Hampton are the running backs. Worley has not played this series. Johnson back. Diving reception over there. And a fine catch. They'll rule it incomplete. Is that Carlo Cheatham over there defensively? Let's see what happens here. They thought they had it on the far side. The coaching staff thought the pass was complete. Well, that's a big play. It's number nine, John Thomas. And that ball is caught by John Thomas. That should have been a reception. That official there behind was blocked yeah, out. There's no way that that official could make he, that call because he's out of position. It was, and Dooley explaining it to him that he was in behind the play. And and that is a big, big moment in this game. It would have been a first down now it is third down Johnson back again pocket collapses and it's complete over the middle he's going to be short of the first down however with Staples and Wiley stopping him at this point in the game Pat, you would fully expect him to line up and try to go for the first down they have to go for the first down right here in this situation you give the ball to your best runner Tim Worley in the I formation Wayne Johnson really took a big hit, and he came up limping a little bit. He's scrambling around there and gets hit by Stallworth, number 92. Less than a yard, and Worley is back in the game. Henderson, the fullback, they'll toss it to Worley. Stretches the defense out, and the 
defense responds with Smokey Hodge leading the way for Auburn. will get the credit, but watch the free safety right here. Here is uh, Hodge, but watch the free safety number 20. That is Chan Morris really come up quickly as well. Morris takes out the blocker. That leaves Worley naked, and Hodge makes the play. That's great team defense. Auburn takes over on downs at the five-minute mark, leading 20 to 10. First Teapot Brown is in at fullback, and Danley slanting off to the left. Terry Webster bringing him down. You know, Brent, the fact they didn't make the first down there makes that catch by John Thomas even more important because he did catch that ball and would have had the first. Second down for Auburn. Clock continuing to run. Georgia with all three of its timeouts, but they're behind by 10. It's uphill now for the dog. Danley through a hole. He squeezes out a first down. Now that was a big hole on the left side. And in this time of the game, when everybody knows you're going to run the ball, you don't find too many big holes. But again, Ed King and Jim Thompson on the left top side did a great job. We want to take another look at that controversial call because there seems to be little doubt but that he caught the ball. Watch the official in behind. He appeared to be screened. Thomas diving has the ball. He's right in behind him. And then he came up and pulled incomplete. It certainly appeared to be a completion from that particular angle. Danley is stopped near the line of scrimmage. A bad break for Georgia. Vince Guthrie up with the tackle because, as Pat Hayden said, that would have been a first down and allowed them a fresh set of downs. Instead, they were stopped on fourth and short and give Pat Dye's defense a lot of credit for taking on Tim Worley. I suppose on second thought, they might have thought about running Worley as a decoy and coming up with Henderson, the fullback. Pretty easy to second guess that call right now. <laughs> Come up here, yeah, absolutely. Second down, nine yards to go for Slack and the Tigers. Here's the toss to Danley. And penalty marker comes down. Vince Guthrie comes up to make the stop, number 54. But there is a penalty flag, and Guthrie appears to be shaken up, slowly getting up. And we head for Oklahoma, Nebraska. Next week, the winner to go down to the Orange Bowl. Had a clip by the offensive team on the run. We'll replay the down after a 15-yard penalty. Tigers penalized 15 yards. Still another penalty against the Tigers. It's amazing this late in the season they've had so many penalties. You expect that early in the year, but Pat Dye has to be really disappointed with all the penalties. I got an idea, Pat. Let's take the winner of the Southeastern Conference, the Southwest, the WAC, the ACC, the Big Eight, the top independent, two at large, eight teams, and let's play a tournament in college football. Let's have those first two Saturdays in December, and let's get a national champion decided on the field. No argument for me. Second down now and 24 yards to go. Here's Danley on the delay. Coming out to midfield. Time running down. Pat Dye and Auburn very much in control of this Bandit game. Five yards to the Georgia 49. Third and 19. What do you want? What do you want? Danley has rushed 37 times for 166 yards. Bo Jackson once carried 38 times in a game. There's the penalty flag as Danley sets sail on that mark. Paul Giles tackling him, but the penalty marker was thrown. Before the ball was snapped, we had delay of the game by the offensive team. It'll be third down.
Let's present this week's Toyota Leadership Awards now. Those players have been singled out for outstanding performance, team contributions, academics, and citizenship. From Georgia, Richard Tarditz, the Renaissance man. He's getting his master's degree in international business. He's from France and from Auburn, Win Lyle. He's a pre-med major from Auburn, Alabama. Toyota donates $1,000 to both these fine schools. Reggie Slack handing it off, and Danley sets sail to put his name in that Danley Auburn record there. book with that carry right now. Obviously, they're aware of that mark, and Pat Dye quickly calls the punting team back for a huddle. Now they'll come out with Shulman leading the way. Two minutes left, and it's a 10-point lead. And Georgia has to think block here. They have 10 men up the line of scrims. The only chance they have is to block a punt. Auburn letting that clock run down. They may even take a delay of game here. They will. They'll back him up still another five yards, but they ran the time off. 140 left on the scoreboard. We're going to get all the scores and highlights. Snap, the delay of the game by the second Still down. It's a shame that you and I have to run for the airplane right away, Pat, but we've got to be someplace. I think Jimmy and Eric can handle it. I think they do an admirable job. <laughs> Just kidding, Jim. <laughs> Here's Schumann. Hangs one high, and that's Carswell. Look at that play. He's dropped him down inside the 10 yard line with a minute and a half. Three times. Schumann has buried him back there. That's a 45 yard punt. He's the master. So tomorrow, come along and watch Mike Ditka as he returns to the Chicago Bears. Take on Joe Gibbs and the Washington Redskins at 12.30. We'll look at linebacker Mike Marshall, who moved to Washington this year. Then Philadelphia at Pittsburgh. We'll hear from Chuck Knoll at 12.30. Tampa Bay goes down to Detroit. The Giants play out in Phoenix. And we've also got the Rams and the Saints as Johnson pulls back into his own end zone, eludes the would-be tackler. Throwing on the run and the diving reception there at the 18-yard line by Troy Sadowski. Let me ask you. A I question. guess I said Mike Marshall. It should have been Wilbur Marshall, the linebacker. I remember old Wilbur Boy. What a player he was at Florida and is in the pros as well. Miles seconds. Under pressure. Throws complete. He hit John Thomas. Let me ask you a question. What do you think about the Sugar Bowl situation? Let's just assume Auburn goes on, and I just assume for the moment they beat Alabama. You have a tie, LSU, and, and Auburn for the conference championship. And the Sugar Bowl doesn't have any criteria they use to select the Sugar Bowl representative. They probably need a, a tie-breaking scheme. Now, when they played each other, and if that's your first tiebreaker, Auburn losing that game to LSU, so the Tigers would go under that tiebreaker. Somewhat unfortunate. Johnson over the middle, and it is caught beautifully by Thomas. And Thomas is inside the 35-yard line. A 31-yard gain, and uh, he's demonstrated some fine ability here in the fourth quarter. 49 seconds to go. A high school quarterback, a highly recruited high school quarterback, along with Wayne Johnson, made the move out to wide receiver and made some nice catches today. Time running out on the dogs. We'll be right back. Auburn leading by 10. 49 seconds to go. And Georgia threatening. Thomas to the left. Johnson is back again. Has time. Throws to Hampton. It's complete at the 11 yard line. It'll be first and 10. And the clock will stop until they move the chains. The quarterback, Johnson, has to get everybody up at the line of scrimmage so he doesn't lose any valuable seconds. 43 seconds to go. Cummings out there with Thomas. Johnson. And it's deflected. Second down. And that was Brian Smith, who has played a great game, number 90, who deflected that pass. It's the second deflection for Smith. Again, he's a big, tall guy who knows if he can't get to the quarterback, he's going to get those big old arms up and knock the ball down.
43 seconds to go. Second down and 10. Thomas over on the left. Marshall wide to the right. Throws incomplete in the end zone. Terrific coverage by Cheatham. And that ball was thrown on a rope to Arthur Marshall, number 12. For a moment, I thought he was going to catch it. But there were an awful lot of bodies around him. 27 seconds to go. Third and 10. Auburn leading by 10 and Georgia threatening. They'll take two cracks at the touchdown. Cummings and Thomas go to the right. Johnson drops it for Henderson, who caught it incomplete. He was out. Out of bounds. John Wiley, the defender there. I think that's a good call by the official. Some of the Georgia fans are upset. Watch this ball. He's got to come down inbounds. Even though he gets pushed out, wasn't even close. Even though he is hit out, he must come down with at least one foot in. Fourth down from the 12. Auburn leading it by 10, 20 to 10. 21 seconds to go. Thomas to his left. Marshall to the right. Looks Thomas incomplete. the Sugar Bowl hat, Auburn undoubtedly will be ranked higher than LSU, and if they beat Alabama, they'll maintain that position, and the Sugar Bowl just might say that they're going to go with the higher-ranked team. Because Auburn beats Georgia here this afternoon by 10. The oldest rivalry in the Deep South. Coach Pat Dye prevails over his alma mater. Goes across the field seeking out Coach Dooley. Two class gentlemen. Down to John Dockery, Doc. Coach, Coach, can I have you for a second? Coach, you said you needed balanced, off, balanced offense to win, you got it. Well, you know, Reggie, of course, had a great day throwing the football, and uh, we feel like that in our conference, the way they play defense, you got to be able to throw the football. And, you did a great job of throwing the football today, and but uh, it was a you know it was a team win. Our kicking team, for, except for the kickoff return, did a great job defensively. We we they made some plays running the football, but overall I thought we did a great job against their running game. And then our offense kept the football away from them, which was very important for us. Coach, do you know that LSU won today? I know they won, and 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 I expected that. So. We just play them. We got Alabama now, and they got a great football team. Alabama may be the best team in the conference that that uh, we we haven't played yet. But you have to feel that your defense can shut them down. Well, I think our defense can play with anybody in the country. And, uh, I, you know, what what you saw against a great Georgia football team, they run in the football, and, and, and believe me, they're for real. I mean, you get down here on the field with them, you saw them. Uh, I got to I got to be mighty proud of our defense and uh, it's just uh, but again our offense kept the pressure off the defense by controlling the football. Well coach congratulations. Thank okay you. now back to you Brent. How good was that defense doc. Well Georgia came in here averaging 286 yards on the ground. They were held to 71 and Pat Hayden didn't you love the way coach Dye started blowing <laughs> smoke in the general direction of Tuscaloosa already. Why that's the best dang football team. <laughs> We haven't played yet this year. You always year. say that about your next they opponent. They are so yeah. talented. I don't know if my little old boys can stay on the field with them. Well, we got a full recap coming your way. Let's go to New York now. Here's Jim Nance. Yeah, yeah he went someplace else. Shows you the color of my recruiting vote. Well, that's reason you end up in the NFL, right? <laughs> then you could buy him. <laughs> Second down, 25. Indiana trying to build on this 
Unsportsmanlike call, a pass up the field. Here's Ryzen, the 10. Ryzen on his feet. He's going to be cut from behind and dropped at the 8-yard line. Slareth, doubling back, just wouldn't let Ryzen take it in. Uh, take a look at this guy. What instinctive running ability. Here he is, the bottom left corner of your screen. He's going to come down there, pushing. He's getting a little move. Now he pushes deep. Now he comes back for the turn in. There he is. Now watch him give him a move. He gives him one move to one side. Did he fake him out of his supporter? Oh, did you see Ezor down the field blocking? Oh, I know. Ezor came down there and blocks the free safety. <laughs> well, we're going to have a timeout now called. Time is called as we have 2.26 to go in this third quarter. As you can state on the move, trying to build to their advantage. Well, here's one that Andre Rice is being taught right now. He committed a personal foul. The head coach, George Perlis, doesn't put up with that kind of stuff in his football team. He's got him by the jersey, and he's chewing on him just like you would your son when he made a mistake. I would my son. And, and then he pats him on the back and in as much says, hey, I love you. Now get out there and play, but don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryzen, after that catch, looked like he's going to take it in, and Slareth caught him. You don't expect the defensive lineman to do that. So third down now, six. And here is the drive that they have underway. Ryzen and Wilson split to the near side. There's been no scoring thus far in the second half. Again, straight ahead, Ezor, and he knocks somebody backwards as he's inside the five to the three. Brad Money with a contact there. You know who's playing very well inside for, for Michigan State right now is Dave Martin, the offensive center. To cut back against an odd man line defense, your center has to be doing a good job. There's the time remaining in the third quarter. McAllister is five for five passing for 93 yards. It looks like they're just a little bit short. It's going to be fourth down, apparently fourth to get the first and goal. Let's see. Or did they make it? Nope, they're just short. So fourth down coming up. Matter of inches to get a first and goal. They need to get just about to the two yard line. He'll go ahead and run it. Well, He'll the way ahead. they're running, I don't know why not. Might as well. I mean, that looks to me like about as sure a thing as you're going to get right now. You know, though, earlier in this third quarter, twice on third and short, or at least once I know, that uh, Indiana came across and stopped them. Here we go. Montgomery and Ezor. Fourth down, inches. Ezor diving, and a big pileup. Wait and see if that's going to be enough for the first and goal. Looks like he got enough. He didn't need all that much. Went airborne behind that big, rugged, physical offensive line. The most physical offensive line that Bill Mallory said they'll face all year long. And it's been a long day for this guy. You know, the, but there'll be a day as this program grows, he will be coaching an offensive line every bit as physical. And his offensive line isn't too bad, you know. They came in here, the number one Russian team in the Big Ten. Especially those guards, Radke and Schrader. So they got the first and goal. It's going to be just outside the one-yard line. Robbins, a Wichita State transfer when they drop football. Tata, just an overachiever at that one guard spot. We've talked about Mandridge. Kula, very good football player, Mark the center. Carlos Marina goes in motion, give to Ezor, and he just slams in there. And one guy indicating touchdown. The headlinesman indicating touchdown. We didn't even see him. There was no. such a big pile up, but they give the touchdown to Ezor, and that is his third of the day. All it is is an isolation lead play. They're just going to give the ball deep, lead the fullback through. Now, using the man in motion, Marino there just to seal the defense so they can't come around the corner. See, and then he buries in there. He's a little gopher size going in there, and he ends up in the end zone. But I think, see, Indiana thought they took the ball away from him. Ezor, third touchdown, 221 yards, 39 carries. You know, see Ezor standing next to the coach there. You know, earlier in the year, Ezor was having a few problems, and oh, the coach took yeah. his car keys away from him, said, hey, you're not even driving a car for a while. Absolutely <laughs> right. Point after attempt. He had two alcohol-related incidents, and as an end result, the keys have gone away. <laughs> he's not driving anymore, and if he has anything happen again, he's going to be dismissed from the university. I think Perlis got his point across. <laughs> yeah, and, and he means it. Yes, sir. 31 6 our count. Well, Monday night, we talked about it a little bit earlier. Let's go back to it again. The Buffalo Bills, the best record in the NFL. What a remarkable story. Jim Kelly, big, strong quarterback. Marino for the Dolphins. Don Shula, you know, he's waiting and 
looking forward to ambushing the Bills when and they get I, down there. I've got to believe he's fuming because he's so used to winning and they're not, they got beat last week, and, but they're going to explode one of these evenings. But, you know, Ted Marsha Broda coaches the Buffalo offense, and he, you know, as a head coach, Coach Burt Jones and everything, and he said, this guy is as good as they come in this Kelly kid. Was the Cornelius Bennett thing the final piece to the puzzle? Yeah, and I think just losing so many years, and when you're losing, drafting intelligently, and, and gradually, that's what the draft is designed to do. If you lose, you pick early, you get the best player. Well, that was an impressive drive, wasn't it? 94 yards, 13 plays, took six minutes and two seconds. The big play was that first down one right coming out, you know, the long run. High low kicking off, 31-6, Michigan State. I believe the Michigan State team's going to find themselves in a bowl. They are playing so very, very well. Short kickoff, and it's fumbled. It's fumbled at the 30-yard line. A big pileup ensuing. Barry Way was the guy that tried to come over with it, and I think, I well, think let's just don't guess. Let's wait. I think Alan Haller, number 23 for the Spartans, had it. I'm not sure. Nope, it's nope. still Indiana's ball. Let's go to Becky Dixon. Gary, with me now is Jade Butcher, a member of Indiana's 1967 Rose Bowl team and the man who, up until this year, held Indiana's all-time scoring record. Jade, how do you feel about that record being broken both by uh, Stoyanovich and Anthony Thompson? Well, Becky, I'm real happy for the young men. I think they've done a real fine job, and I, I like to see our program get turned around, which I think it has, and I'm real happy for them. Let's go back for a moment to 1967. You lost the Rose Bowl 14-3, to but you were playing the number one team in the country, USC, mm -hmm. who just happened to have a back named O.J. Simpson. What do you remember about that experience? <laughs> that was a great game. I think we had could have won that game, but there was a couple of bad calls, and <laughs> of course, O.J. was probably the greatest running back there was, and, and they had a good team, and we had a good team, and they won out in the end. All right, thank you very much. Thank Jay you. Richard. Gary? Remembers those bad calls, huh? He should be a coach. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little screen pass to Cal Miller, and uh, Michigan State reacted very well on the play. Carlos Jenkins is over there to make the stop. Carlos Jenkins is the kind of linebacker that flashes into play. A year ago, he was a good special teams player, and they say Norm uh, Parker told me that, uh, and he's the defensive coordinator this guy in, in the next year will be one of the outstanding outside linebackers in the Big Ten well he's playing a position that's been filled by the likes of Carl Banks and Anthony Bell pretty good company yes sir ball you're back to throw he's throwing deep down the field is Gooden he's got it Gary Gooden the fastest player on this team beat the defender had to wait a little bit on it but he got it taking a look at this in isolation now you're going to watch a guy that was second in the big 10 in the 55 yard indoor dash here he is look at him i mean he has speed and, and Derek reed can run too but when you get turned on if the quarterback would have been able to bullyard would have been able to get it out there he'd have walked in with that thing even with the window he's back the ball <laughs> just didn't quite have enough on it 47 yard completion to gooden and gooden out of brooklyn nazareth high school Runs on the track team in spring rather than going to spring football practice. First down now at the 25 of Michigan State. Bolliard up the middle again. The patch is made by Rob Turner, and he's got another first down. To the 12, Percy Snow on the stop. That's the same thing they did three or four times in the first quarter and threw incomplete. Now here's Turner coming into motion. Now he's going to go up in there and find the hole where the linebackers drop out. See, they're reading Percy Snow. If Percy Snow comes toward him, they're going to throw the ball to the tight end. If he comes toward the tight end, they're going to throw it to Turner. Because Turner's got it. Rob Turner, who they feel is further along at this stage of his career than Ernie Jones, is now playing for the Phoenix Cardinals. First down now at the 12-yard line. Thompson, and Thompson uh, about two yards, close to the 10. Travis Davis over to make the stop. How long was Snow? Thompson really doesn't like to carry the ball running parallel to the line of scrimmage. He likes to attack the line of scrimmage. So we've come to the end of three quarters of play here at Memorial Stadium. 31-6, Michigan State. ABC's college football will continue after this message. And a word from our local stations. Welcome back to Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Gary Bender along with Dick Vermeil and Becky Dixon as Indiana trying to score their first touchdown of the football game. The big play of 47 yard completion. They now have the ball at the 11 yard line of Michigan State. Second down and nine as we begin the fourth quarter. 31 6, Michigan State. Ball, you're back to throw. 
can't make the connection with Turner. Turner on the near sideline, defending on the play with John Miller. And Turner, tell you was, excuse me, I tell you why he couldn't throw that real accurately. Vanderbilt, being number 66, hit him just as he threw that football. So Moyer, the guy who came in relief of Snell, who missed six straight passes and threw a very costly interception, has made the biggest play of the game for Indiana, that 47-yard strike. Now he needs to capitalize on it. Third down and nine from the 11-yard line. He's 0 for 8 now on third down conversion. Back to throw. Bollier in zone, and oh, it's dropped. On the near side, a near connection with Gary Gooden, the guy who caught that 47-yard pass. Well, he got... He got turned around, Gary, and then he was back on his heels and he lost his balance. And I think he was more concerned about keeping his feet than catching the football. It's a corner pattern off motion. There he goes. He lays it out there. It looks like it's throwing nicely. See him backpedaling right there. He's on his heels. See, he's back and he's trying to maintain his balance. <laughs> See that? And then he finally loses his balance and the football. Who 